So hi and welcome to this video. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be continuing on in our uh, uh, virtual machine series and what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be writing some code. So in the last series or the last video we left off we created a shortcut to the rpython folder. We have a folder or a file called vm.py. We downloaded the pypy source and we uh, checked it was working in the terminal. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, create a test program to uh, test that it actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up vm.py and with when writing in uh, our Python, you can't use you know Python three features like print with the uh, the print function. You have to use the Python two version. So you would say print hello world or whatever. Uh, but I'll show you now this won't work. Uh, if I just leave it like this. So I'm going to write print hello world and I'm going to go to my terminal and if I type python if I type python 3 it will uh, as you can see launch the python 3 um, interpreter. If I write python it will launch the python 2 interpreter. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to or we're going to just run this in the python 2 interpreter uh, just to show you that it works. So I'm going to say print vm.py but I can just type in the letter v and I can hit tab and it fills it in for me and as you can see it says hello world so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and compile it using our python and obviously it won't work but the first thing we need to do is we need to actually go to our R python folder we go to our python and we go to the bin folder and here's our uh, our python uh, it's kind of like our translator don't worry about that that's like an interactive version but this is what we're going to be using so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sim link. So I'm going to say ln or ln minus s, and I'm going to drag in uh, the file. And then in here, what I'm going to say is I'm just going to call it r. So now if I uh, list the contents, we can see we have uh, r, we have our Python, and we have vm.py. So if I go back out of here, you can see we have a link to the uh, r. Um, sort of the R Python translator. We have three things in this folder, and we need to use this one to translate our programs. So how you do it is you say Python, because this is a Python program. You say Python space and then the name of it, which in my case is R because uh, that's what I called it up here. Then what you do is you give it the file name. So I'm going to say vm.py and hit enter. As you can see, it didn't work. That's because we didn't, uh, because we're trying to mimic a C program or we're trying to convert it into a C program, we have to have something called a main function, which is um, something that uh, Python doesn't require but C does. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it in and then I'm going to show you uh, what we need to do. So, I'm going to paste it in now and here we can see here's everything we need to make our program work. So, as you can see up here, we have the main function and at the minute it just does nothing, it returns zero. So what this is called is it's it's just called our boilerplate code, which is just code that's required to make it run. So just think of it like that. Just ignore it and just uh, copy and paste it. It uh you don't have to change this throughout the course of the tutorials, and then just ignore this too. So ignore these bottom two. Just pretend um well so you can pretend they're not there, but just put them in the bottom of the program. And you never have to think about them again. So once you've done that, what we're gonna do is we're just going to cut this and we're going to paste our print statement in our main function. So this is the equivalent of a C program with the printf function in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the terminal and I'm going to hit up and this will uh, put the last command back in the terminal and I hit enter now. And as you can see it's going to do loads of random stuff but it's going to, com it's going to uh, convert our Python or like our Python code into uh, C code and then it's going to compile it. It usually takes about 20 seconds for a small program so uh, just there we go okay it took 15 seconds and if I uh, go to the finder you can see now we have an executable which is a C file or well, it was a C file it's um, a binary file that's called vm-c and if I uh, go into the terminal and I run that file by doing a dot forward slash vm-c and hit enter as you can see it says hello world we can still run our old Python program the same way. So if I type in Python, or Python vm.py, uh, okay, uh, we need to just import up here, import sys, which is just a standard library function or a standard library module. As you can see now, it says hello world. 
But I'm going to show you a difference in the uh, speed between converting it to C and keeping it in Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a time uh, command. I'm going to say time Python vm.py. So as you can see, it tells us the time. It says, just ignore these bottom two and just look at the real one. It says it took 0.026 seconds to execute, which sounds pretty fast, but um, I mean, you can see how much quicker we get whenever we uh, convert it to C. So if I do the same thing uh, on the C program, so if I do the same thing on the C program and hit enter, as you can see, look, it's a lot quicker. It's um, as you can see, it takes not point not two or it takes not point not two six seconds with uh, when running inside the Python interpreter, and when we run it directly off the uh, computer's uh, well, the computer's processor, you can see it's not point not five seconds. So that's uh, obviously way, way faster. And then this means that our programs are going to be a lot quicker as well because we don't have to run inside the Python a virtual machine. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.